Well, I want to welcome you back again as we continue on in this bobsled build. I really do get quite a kick out of the, the comments. Um, last week I mentioned that it's kind of a puzzle, and it is, and I understand that. You know, I've, uh, I've ridden motorcycles for a lot of years, and there's a saying in the motorcycle community, it's not so much the destination that it's the ride that really counts. And that's kind of what this whole deal is. We're going to get to the destination and get this all put together. But right now, it's just about the ride. It's the process of putting it all together. So I appreciate your patience and hanging in there. We will get it done. But I'm going to make a few more parts, and then we're actually going to begin the assembly, the early assembly process of the runners on this bobsled. So I hope you understand the process as we continue on. Well, there's just a little more iron work that needs to be added to the tip of these runners. And this is an eighth inch by two and a half inch, two feet long piece of flat strap. And I have to bend this on edge. And it's a bit of a challenge, but that's what we're gonna to start to do next. Now between the runners is a heavy piece of timber that's called the bunk. This is five feet long, four inches thick, and I'm gonna start out with about eight inch wide piece. Now the bunk also not only carries the load, but it also determines the angle of the runners. You notice on the bottom of this pattern, it's not straight, but it's at a slight angle. That has the purpose of putting the the runners at an angle instead of riding flat. So if the runners did stand straight up and down, the bottom shoe would be flat and this sled would have a tough time tracking straight. So the runners are put at an angle and then the inner corner of the shoe of the iron runs on the edge and that's what actually helps the sled track straight.
So right now I have this bunk upside down, but this helps you see the angle that the runners are set at. Now both the front and the back bunk are exactly the same. There is no difference between the two. Now this timber I'm going to make into what's called the roller. The sled has a front roller and a back roller and they are also both the same. I know it won't make sense yet, but it will down the road. Now on top of both the front and the back bunk is a bolster. This is going to be the rear bolster. And then after I make this one, I'll make the front bolster. The front bolster is a little different because it has to pivot with a fifth wheel plate. This rear bolster is bolted securely in place. Now you remember back in the first video when we started the process on this little series? I made some bridge irons. Well to keep these bridge irons in place, I'm going to make some little clips that's going to help hold them onto the runners.
So the bridge irons are what actually keep the bunk in place. And the bunk doesn't set in the center of the runner, but it sets in the center of the section that rides on the ground. So this is 54 inch contact on the ground. I'm going to put the bunk at half of that at the 27 inches. So it looks like it's setting back on the runner, but it's actually in the center where it has contact. Now the runners are bolted to these iron shoes and I'm going to use a 3 8 countersunk bolt and that's what I'm doing here is positioning the bolt pattern to bolt the shoe to the runner. Now the bottom carrying iron of this bridge assembly, which carries the weight of the bunk and therefore the weight of the load, 
is a two inch by half inch leg bar channel. I'm going to recess this down onto the top of the runners. And I'm going to use this router bit to kind of accomplish that. But I'm going to test it first on this scrap piece so I can get my adjustment correct. When I actually put them on the runner, it'll fit like it should.
Well, as I get this all oiled up with this TWP, Total Wood Preservative, I'm going to let her set for a couple days and let her dry. So once again, thanks for watching and coming along on the journey.